What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? It is your host, Avery, here, and I wanted to bring a discussion video to you guys today talking about Egyptian god support. Now, obviously, we are getting Rage of Ra uh, coming up here in, I think, just a few days or like next week, something like that, but we are getting tons of new support. Uh, when it comes to specifically the Winged Dragon of Ra, we're getting one with the Sun God, Dark Spell Regeneration. We're getting, well actually I think we already have Dark Spell Regeneration, but I digress. We're getting some fairly decent cards um, to help the Winged Dragon of Ra card itself be a more playable card. We're also getting Egyptian God Slime, which is going to be amazing for stun decks. Uh, if this card is going to be on the radar, I mean, this card is absolutely insane. The fact that it's 3,000 attack and defense, and you can just use Metal Reflect Slime to uh, bring it out. And then it can be used as three tributes for the tribute summon of an Egyptian god. And then on top of that, too, it can't be destroyed by battle, and your opponent cannot target any monsters you control with card effects except God Slime, and their monsters can't target any of your monsters for attacks except God Slime. It's it's just like in the anime. It's super, super cool. I'm in love with this card. I think it's awesome. But then I started thinking about Slifer and Obelisk. Slifer the Sky Dragon being my favorite Egyptian god. Unfortunately, being pretty much the weakest of the Egyptian gods, Obelisk being considered to be the strongest because it has a 4,000 attack base stat. But I started thinking that we are giving so much support to the Winged Dragon of Ra and not really a whole lot of support to Slifer and Obelisk, and I wanted to talk with you guys about that, so let's just dive right in and get into it. And, you know, you can make the argument that some of the support that the Winged Dragon of Ra has is generic to the point that you can use it with Slifer or Obelisk. That is true, but those cards are very few and far between. The two that come to mind are Ra's Disciple and the True Name. The True Name allows you to special summon an Egyptian god right out, uh, I believe it's from the hand or deck, yeah. So uh, add to your hand or special summon one divine monster from your deck. So you can cheese out an Egyptian god, but at the same time, in order to do that, uh, you have to declare the top card of your deck correctly, which the only way to do that is to use cards like uh, Feather of the Phoenix, where you can ditch a card and then put a card from your grave on top of the deck, Dark Magic Circle to take the top three and arrange them in any order, and it that's not really, you know, that's not good enough in a competitive mindset. And I'm looking at these from the most competitive mindset that you can have uh, in this game. You know, you, we're talking about things like Eldritch. We're talking about Link Cross, Aurora Dawn. I mean, we are going against some very heavy combo-based decks in this day and age of Yu-Gi-Oh! And so for the cards, like for cards like the Egyptian Gods to keep up, they need to have very good support. But the issue with the Egyptian Gods is that they are inherently flawed, right? I mean, all three of these cards need three tributes to tribute summon. But at the same time, their summon can't be negated. And when they're summoned, cards and effects can't be activated. So they're just like Star Eater. Um, and then they have different effects, uh, you know, based upon their specific card, but they all share the same effect that when they're special summoned, uh, they are sent to the graveyard at the end of the turn, um, during the end phase, I should say. If they were special summoned, sent to the graveyard. And then, of course, we know that Raw gains a thousand, or, excuse me, Slifer gains a thousand attack for each card in the hand. If you play out a monster, it will use its second mouth, and air quotes, to decrease your monster's attack by 2,000. And then if it goes to zero, it pops. Obelisk can... Uh, destroy all the monsters, all your attack mode monsters, and then Raw can uh, just, you pay a thousand life points, send a card to the grave. And so I started thinking, how is it that we can make these, uh, gen uh, what do you call it, these cards that are inherently flawed, right? How do we make them the most competitive they can be? I started thinking, well, what if we gave them a set? But at the same time, we already gave them Rage of Raw. Uh, even though it focuses mostly on Raw, you could say that that was an Egyptian God support set in theory. However, at the same time, what if they did like they did with Sacred Beasts? Why not give them a structure deck? Give us more Egyptian gods. 
expand more on the divine beast archetype. Give us retrains of the Egyptian gods. Could you imagine if we had like another form of Slifer, Obelisk, and Ra? Like, you know how there's Raphael, Lord of Phantasm, Shimmering Scraper, and that's the name of his attack is Shimmering Scraper? What if we got Obelisk the Tormentor, Dash, Fist of Fury, or Fist of Fate, since it was called both things in the English dub. I didn't watch the Japanese, but they switched between Fist of Fury and Fist of Fate. Give us two monsters, or give us a trap called Fist of Fate. Give us a monster, Obelisk of Torment, or Dash, Fist of Fury. It could be an, an Honest for the deck, or it could be a, a monster that would let you search an Egyptian god. Because one of the big problems right now that the Egyptian gods have is that they don't really have a reliable way to get searched. I mean, yeah, you have True Name, but True Name, let's be honest, is garbage. And you have ways to search a card like Monster Reborn with... Millennium Revelation, and then you have Ancient Chant, which lets you search raw, but it only searches raw. It doesn't search Slifer or Obelisk. So what the hell is the point? I, this also segues into my next point, which is the Creator Elite Heracity, or I guess its new name is Hal Halakatai, Halakati, Halakalaka, whatever, the Creator of Light. This card is a Japanese exclusive. You can only get it in Japan. It, I don't even think it's a legal card to play. I think it was like some sort of prize card. Um, but what if they made a card like this legal to play and gave us Egyptian god support in this structure deck? You could finally print the Creator of Light in the TCG by making a structure deck for the Egyptian gods. Now, for those of you who don't know what this does, it's literally an auto win card. It's Exodia. Um, it's a creator god effect, and this is a real card. You can find it on eBay and stuff. Unknown attack and defense. Can't be normal summoner set. It has to be special summon from the hand by attributing three monsters whose original names are the Egyptian gods. So you can't use Phantom of Chaos shit like that. It has to be the actual three Egyptian gods. So one way that you could do this is that you could get out like two pendulum scales between 0 and 12, special summon out the three gods from your hand, and then have your fourth card be the creator of light. But I mean... That's a six card combo. Like, you have to go second and open up those six cards to auto win. Like, that's, that's just not going to happen. Uh, and it cannot be special summoned by other ways. And its special summon cannot be negated. And the player that special summons this card wins the duel. Now, <laughs> there, there was a cheese that I saw on this on EDO Pro where some guy made a duel puzzle. And this does actually work. Uh, you can use Lullaby of Obedience to pay 2,000 life points to, like, force the opponent to let you special summon the card because it ignores the summoning conditions. Uh, and there was some sort of weird setup where like you couldn't add a card to your hand, you can only special summon it. So you could just special summon out Creator of Light and win the duel. It's a cheese thing. That's never going to come up. Um, but the reason why I say that Pendulum Summoning Out the Egyptian Gods is cheese is because it's not actual Egyptian God support. Yes, you can get out the Egyptian Gods this way, but you also have to be able to win in that turn because the Egyptian Gods are just going to go to the grave at the end phase. And I'm not saying that that's necessarily unfair to the Egyptian gods that they have to go to the graveyard at the end phase. I think that that's pretty balanced. Could you imagine if Obelisk the Tormentor did not go to the graveyard at the end phase of the turn that it was special summon? I mean, people would throw that in as a little mini beatdown engine in all of their decks. Like, look at Eldritch. They could very easily run one copy of Obelisk, one copy of Monster Reborn or something like that. Use like a Foolish Burial to dump the Obelisk. Use Monster Reborn to get out Obelisk. Congratulations, you now have a 4,000 beat stick on the board that just doesn't go to the graveyard. Like, that's not fair. <laughs> like, even though you got to tribute three monsters, that just seems a little bit too good. Now, what they could do with this is that they could do something like Again, in a structure deck, or hell, even make it a set because the shit's going to sell. I can guarantee you that. They can do something where they release a trap card, like, you know, one with the sun god, like they did for Raw. They could release a trap card for the Egyptian gods that when you activate it, the Egyptian gods do not have to activate their effects that send them to the graveyard at the end of the turn that they're special summon. It nullifies that effect. Um, and then you could have it be balanced and have it be something like, if this card is destroyed, banish all Divine Beast monsters on the field, you know, something like that. Um, you know, the, the deck doesn't have to be tier one, you don't gotta make it tier zero, even as fun as that would be, but 
it would just be cool to see more Egyptian god support specifically for these two and to finally give us the creator of light. I think it would be so cool to have this card in the TCG and have it be legal to play so that, you know, our Yu-Gi-Oh community here in the TCG could mess around with it. You know, it's it's a win condition. So, you know, even if you got to make it into like a pendulum based deck where you get out a scale zero and a scale 12, bring out all three gods and get out the creator of light. Like, it, number one, that's not going to be broken because, again, they don't have a lot of ways to get searched. Uh, you know, the true name is not a searcher. I'm sorry. They just don't have anything, you know, compared to raw. That is I'm going to call it a tier three, tier four uh, OTK deck. Uh, but it has things that make it a little bit better. I mean, you've got Sphere Mode to clear the opponent's board. You've got Immortal Phoenix, which is a 4,000 beater that uh, essentially repeats the cycle of getting out raw because it just lets you get back out Sphere Mode to your field, which is basically indestructible. Then you contribute it for raw. Raw becomes 4,000. You can start using raw's effect. So, you know, if they're pushing this support for raw to obviously make raw like an OTK-based card, which is kind of always what it's been, why not push more support for the other two gods that would help push the type of strategy that you would need to have for them? You know, whether it's, uh, you know, printing more cards that was used in Yami Yugi's deck when he went against, uh, you know, Little Yugi in the final episode, like the bounce spell. Like he, he used cards that helped facilitate him to getting out the Egyptian gods. I think seeing more of that would be really, really cool. Even if you got to make it into a structure deck. I mean, I think that that's really the best idea for this because you can put a bunch of support into one deck and then just sell it and make money. And then at the same time, you can reprint cards like Reactor Slime, God Slime for people that didn't get it in Rage of Raw. This is an easy chance for them to get a full 40 card deck along with this other Egyptian God support. So let me know what you guys think in the comments below. I don't want to drag this on for too long, but I just wanted to throw this out there to the community. I think it's a very interesting idea at the very least, whether they make another set to get more Egyptian God support or a structure deck for them. And, you know, release retrains of the Egyptian gods, I think would be really cool. Because, you know, you look at all the other attributes and archetypes in Yu-Gi-Oh that they've expanded on. They expanded on Gaia the Fierce Knight. They expanded on Dark Magician Blue Eyes. They've expanded on the Rock archetype itself or the rock attribute with that emancipator you know why not expand on the divine beast attribute slash type slash archetype whatever you want to call it and you know maybe give us something finally like the creator of light or just give us retrains of the gods give us more support for the specific god cards i think it'd be very cool to see and i know i would buy three copies on day one of a structure deck for it so let me know what you guys think thank you for watching and i will see you in the next video